Mr. Price, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you very much indeed. How are you doing? Really, really good. Such a pleasure to talk to you. So, the primary reason why we're talking is because you're soon going to be playing live in Dublin. Uh, I guess the first question off the, off the mark is when you come to do stuff like this, when you're doing live performances, what is that like? Because it must be very, very different to your day-to-day job. Well, exactly. I mean, it, that's the thing. It's like, you know, my day-to-day job, we get to record, you know, beautiful orchestras in recording studios, but, you know, you don't record it necessarily all at the same time. It's quite a technical process, putting a film score together, um, and you certainly don't have an audience. And so you don't have any of that feeling of, of give and take that you get. And the idea of um, bringing a show like this to a place like Dublin and, you know, big orchestra, huge screen, all those people, all of us together, I just can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, like there, there is something uh, kind of specifically entertaining about a live orchestra show accompanying, I guess when people know they already love the music to something that's quite visual, uh, seeing it all come together live, there, it's a specific energy in a crowd like that. It's, it's that thing if it's happening right now, you know, we're all there, we're all doing this thing together and especially a show like this where, you know, we're celebrating the planet and, you know, looking a little bit about what's going wrong with the planet, but hopefully also sending people away with a load of optimism about what can happen. You know, hopefully it's going to be a, a, a huge, great, celebration together and just on the our planet documentary so it was 2019 i believe was the first one when the first one came out now you, you're probably working on it quite a bit of uh quite a while before that but when it comes to because obviously at david Atbury is like a national institution he's a worldwide institution everyone knows what he is everyone knows what he does is it tough to make the score to a project like that your own because i guess people might already have an idea of what it's supposed to sound like. So is that tough for you to come in and go, okay, I'm going to make this my own thing? Well, I I think all I can ever do with things like that is really just respond to the pictures in the only way I can, you know, and I, there's been such amazing work done by the likes of George Fenton and beyond, you know, um, that you'd be very easy to get kind of terrified by it. But once you're sitting in a room and you're looking at those pictures, you just start to hear things in your head and, you know, something like uh, working with David Attenborough's voice, you've got this amazing kind of inspiring lead instrument going on all the time that you're kind of just trying to accompany and help his message get across the best possible way. So yeah, it's it's sort of, uh, if you stop and think about it, I think it's really intimidating, but if you're just getting getting on with it, it's the most satisfying sort of scoring that I've, I've really been involved in. That's that's great to hear because obviously there's like, it's as you mentioned, there's some huge names involved in this. Like we've had like Hans Zimmer has done some bombastic stuff with uh, with Amber's work. But when it comes to you specifically, like when they, when they offered you this job or when your agent came to you or however it came about, were you, were you initially like, oh, no, <laughs> that's that's a lot. Or were you like, no, I'm, I'm in immediately. I was definitely daunted. And and my, I remember my first conversations were, were very much like, oh, that's a, that's a lot and that's frightening. But then they were really clever. They got me to visit them in Bristol and they sat me in the screening room that they've got there and they just put a handful of, of sequences. They weren't edited yet, but just, you know, footage that they'd got. And, you know, I don't think anyone could look at that stuff and not go, I'd really like to put music to that, please. And so so once I'd seen it, there was just no question that you desperately wanted to do it. And and they're great storytellers. And, you know, they 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 really understand how to put across a story and a message over the arc of what was a, an eight part series originally for our planet. So it was it was really fun to do. This is probably very difficult. to. It's probably like asking people to pick their favorite child. But is there a particular track from working with Attenborough's work that you're like, that's that's the one that's like the that's the one I really love to do uh, well, live for audiences? Well, this this live thing has been been a great experience of working that out, really, because, you know, I wrote it was an eight hour series the original one and we made this show a two hour thing and that really meant me going in these are the pieces i really want to feature and you know in some places we've uh, um gone back into the footage and we've re-edited totally new sequences so we could you know use the the music in the best possible way i mean one piece that i always come back to with our planet was a piece it was in the freshwater episode it's called mayflies and it was this kind of just such beautiful images of, of water traveling to all the different places it needs to travel to to keep us all going and um, it became this sort of big anthemic piece and i'm very excited about playing that um and water generally tends to be the pieces that, that i love we've got sort of sequences with uh, whales in the in the show which uh, one of uh, baby blue when you the first footage ever at that time of, of you know a, a blue whale calf and its mother and it's a really sort of intimate piece but i think 
in that environment with the, the whole place kind of, um, you know, we have this amazing light show as well. So the whole place will feel like you're kind of with them in the ocean. I think that could be a really special moment. That's that's fantastic. I'm, I'm actually super psyched to, to check it out live. So you've, you've completely sold me on it. If it's okay to go back just a bit through, through your own work. Absolutely. So 2011, Attack the Block with Basement Jacks. So mm-hmm. in, in 2011, I was a huge Basement Jacks fan. Uh, okay. Still am to this day. So... When I heard this was happening, I was like, okay, that's interesting. For for yourself, this is your first kind of proper scoring project, according to IMDb anyway. Was that, what, like, <laughs> how was that? Like, what are your memories of going, yes, this is your first film, and also you're doing it with these really forward-thinking pop artists? I mean, it was it was just a, a, a really fast kind of um, surprise. I mean, I've been in the industry for 15 years before that, sort of doing all these other secret jobs in film music where you're arranging and orchestrating and and programming and doing all the little in-between kind of jobs. And I'd done that for, for Edgar Wright on his film Scott Pilgrim versus The World. And that was the thing just before Attack the Block. So when Attack the Block came up, they'd had this idea of, of involving Basement Jacks but film scoring is a really sort of different kind of world. And so the idea was to, to put someone like me who was very um, entrenched in film music with someone like them and kind of hopefully bring the best out of both of us. So it was a great experience, very, very fast. You know, I think the whole score was done in about a month. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, for me, it was great. I would I would write a, a, a piece to the film and then I would kind of send it to them and say, look, here's here's what I'm thinking my drums that I put in here, they're not very good. What would you do for that? And I'd suddenly get these things back and you'd find yourself getting these ingredients back in and sort of, it became this kind of real blend of, of my style, their style, and it became a little unique thing on its own. So yeah, it was a, a lot of fun to do. You mentioned there uh, that it was very fast. It was a month. What's What would you say is the longest you've spent on, on one particular project? I mean, something like Gravity. I was I was working pretty much every day for very long hours for, for the best part of 10 months. Wow. And something like Our Planet, I was on that for the best part of a year because it was so much music. Um, but most films, you know, seem to be between kind of three and seven or eight months for me. I mean, I think I, I take on less than other people because I really like to 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 get stuck in and do it myself. And I'm kind of a bit of a one man band, really. So, <laughs> so, you know, it takes me a while. Well, just one last question on on Attack the Block, kind of. Um, as I mentioned, l- loved Basement Jacks, but they've kind of disappeared. Do you have any contact with them at all? Not in a in a while, actually. Um, no, there's is. Uh, I'm sure they're doing well. I keep seeing they appear on DJ sets every now and then. Yeah. You see them popping up at festivals and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, back back in those days, I I think they were kind of reaching that point of being pop stars, where you know what we are, are we going to do next? You know, and they they had a little go at film schools. Maybe that wasn't the thing for them. But you know, I, I'm pleased that that we got that one done together. So two years after Attack the Block, uh, only your third IMDb credit, official IMDb composer credit. And you've won the Oscar for Gravity, which is insane because you're like you're up against John Williams. Uh, I have to have it here. Alexander Desplat, uh, the guys from Arcade Fire, and Thomas Newman. Yes. Uh, so that's like some of the best in the world, some of the best ever, really. What are your memories of winning the Oscar on on, on the night? Well, one of the big memories actually is is of John Williams because he was sitting next to me. You know, you're in this kind of little row when they announced who was going to win. And I just remember sitting there and Thomas Newman and John Williams were, were kind of on the row with me. And they're two heroes of mine. You know, I've, I've listened to their music for as long as I can remember. And they're both lovely people. And we'd spent a bit of time with each other in that week leading up to the Oscars. There's all these sort of, you know, little concerts and things that you get involved with. And I just remember thinking, don't forget this moment. You know, I never expected to, to, to win it, but just like you're here with these people, this is amazing. And then when they did announce it, the first person I turned to was John Williams. And he just, you know, shook my hand and looked me in the eye. And it was, that's the thing I remember now, if I look back at that night, was, was his kindness, really, you know, in a moment that was a, a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's it was, you know, I, I wish I could go back and, and do it again and look up because I didn't really sort of look up during the whole thing. You were so kind of like, oh, my God. And it was, yeah, what an experience. Listen, if you're looking at John Williams, I don't think you need to look any further. Like, that's, I, that's, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> but just in terms of the score for, for Gravity, I remember seeing it at, at a preview screen and back back in 2013 and being blown away by every audio-visual aspect of it because it was, it was, it was very much its own thing. It was super cutting edge. And I do remember your score at the time. It was, it was uh, ambient and it, it was 
almost diegetic in a way where it was it was bleeding into what was happening uh, in, on screen and I, I just remember being like completely blown away by it when it came to scoring the movie was there what was your in what was your point where you're like okay this is what this is how i'm going to tackle this because it does feel quite different to pretty much anything else that was coming out around the same time i mean i, th- I think one of the, one of the benefits of, of working for a genius which you know alfonso Cuaron is is that you know, he, he devised this this thing where all the rules could be broken. You know, you've got a, an action film, but it's based in space where there is no sound. So score doesn't have to do all the things that an action film score would do. You know, you, there's a reason why in action films, normally you've got the drums blasting away and you've got, because it cuts through against all this other noise. I haven't got any of that. So I could kind of do a very different sort of score and be very sort of intimate and very... His, you know what would be a loud moment in another film didn't have to be in gravity every convention was broken even to the extent that normally all the music would come from the front speakers in a theater but you're in space there's there is no front back left and right so why is the music doing that and once you've freed yourself up from all the rules the music could be unique and then it was this this case of just trying things and gradually piecing together the score that just emotionally felt right all the way through and the longer you worked on it the more the sounds got more distinct and more unique and the more experiments you did and the end point was was the the final film you know and it, it does get more kind of orchestral as you go through the score as she gets closer to earth but before that there was an, an awful lot of, of quite bold kind of experimentation which you can only do when you're we are working for someone like that someone who's you know so strong in in what they want and so strong in supporting you and giving you the space to do it yeah because there's there's a scene i think it's pretty much towards the very end when when she's sur- surfacing a- above and below the water and you can hear the score reacting to her surfacing and going back beneath yeah. the surface and I, I remember it was like that has, it blew my mind because i was like it's just it's it's a it's that thin line of it's obvious but it's also genius at the same time where you're like of course because She's reacting and the score is reacting. Like moments like that really, really, really stand out for me in terms of the work right. they've done so far. I thought and that was, that was the hope. You know, it, it was that that thing. There, there is no sound in space. So you, the, so the music was the thing that was doing what sound would have done. You know, if there was, if someone was colliding with the ISS in space, usually, you know, you'd expect that to be a huge sound effect moment. But why would there be? It's a vacuum, right? So music could then do that in a different sort of way. So it was a very it was almost like an animation score in terms of the process for me. I was hitting so many things, you know, <laughs> often you'd get out the way of because you know there's going to be a big noise there, you know, but there wasn't any of that. So it it just it just meant that, that everything was open to me. And, you know, what what a, what an opportunity for, for someone, you know. Uh, I'm going to jump forward three years, I think, to one of the most discussed blockbusters of recent years, Suicide Squad. I was actually listening back to the to the score um, in coming up to this to this chat and I was like it's it's interesting because the film is is so so heavily on its soundtrack with the people coming in Mm -hmm. uh, singing songs over it so I'm curious what were your memories of working on that because there's obviously there's the hashtag release the air cut there's a lot of conversation around so many different cuts of this movie were you were you like did you score the movie that we saw or did you score a different movie that has then been recut and has your score in it, or I, I, what's your experiences on it? Well, I mean, I, I think the, the 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 thing I always point to with this is if, if you listen to the soundtrack record for that, there's an awful lot of music that you won't hear in the film. Mm. Um, so I was I was on the project for for a long time and wrote a lot of of music to to various cuts, um, and you know, in the end, that film went the way it went, and there was obviously you know a change of direction that happened um, towards the end of it, where a lot of songs came in and you know various editorial things happened. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, um, for me, it was my second project with David Ayer and I, I have a tremendous amount of time with him. I'm so proud of the work we did together and Fury is still one of the, the scores that I'm, I'm really proud of. And that was, you know, a very close collaboration with him. So yeah, I kind of, um, you know, I'm, I'm very supportive of, of all things David and, um, yeah, it was, it was a, a frustrating and kind of tricky time, hell of a sort of experience in terms of, you know, the Hollywood thing. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very proud of the work and it, it was the first time I'd ever recorded in LA and it was just glorious. You know, you kind of, you were with these amazing musicians who do this all the time and it was just, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a, a fun time, but you know, kind of frustrating end game. 
Is is there another version that you've seen that you're like, oh, I wish audiences had seen that one? Um, I yeah, I'd, I'd always rather see the version that had all the music in it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there thing, things exist, but I, you know, who knows in the politics of of that world what could ever happen? But you know, there was certainly, yeah, as you can see from the the even the titles on the score album, there was a lot of things that that you didn't see. Uh, and then we're going to jump forward to to twenty twenty two. So I seen Beast like two or three weeks ago and I spoke to everyone involved Idris and uh, Balthazar oh. and I had great chats with them all they're all lovely lovely people and from the visual side I noticed there was almost a, a nod towards The Shining there's a lot of long tracking shots following people around which was very like the, the overlook except it's all outdoors and people living 100 by line so a little bit <laughs> and then uh, with the trailer I think already dropped yesterday for My Policeman uh, the new Harry Styles um, drama, and they they feel like two very different movies, both being released within a couple of months of each other, and you're scoring them both. And mm-hmm. I imagine the scores will be quite different for them both. Yes. So <laughs> when for for now, like, what is it for you that you're like? That's what I want to do. That's the, that's the project I want to do next. What what kind of gets you out of bed in the morning to do? The specific projects you want to do it, it's it is the, the 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 difference it's the stories and it's the, the how can we tell a story differently and what haven't i done before you know it's like the the my policeman was an opportunity to do a very intimate drama score of the fact i i haven't done you know a lot of my stuff has been on a sort of broader scale and there's an awful lot of uh technique to it and all that and this was just you know how much of a, a, a heart-driven score can i can i write and i got to work with Michael Grandage, who's, you know, been someone whose plays I was watching 25 years ago in London and, you know, is every bit as wonderful as you'd hope he would be. And to work with him was this amazing opportunity. So whereas the Beast, you know, something like that was, you know, how how can we make an African score that's got all this tension? And, and because of those long shots, you know, music was being asked to, to to sort of calibrate tension over really long periods of time. And that's a kind of fascinating thing to get into. How can you do that in a distinctive kind of a way? So they're all just different challenges, and I I just love different challenges, you know. And the, the, I always try whatever project I move on to to be as far away from the one I've just finished as possible to make me think differently. And you always learn so much doing that as well. It just becomes, you know, I I had a great time on Beast working with you know a Gambian artist and with Laura Mvula who did so many vocals on that 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 soundtrack. Whereas something like uh, My Policeman, I worked really closely with a chamber orchestra and, you know, I wrote very specific solos for for Karen Jones, who plays flute all over the thing. And it's just beautiful player, you know. So it's just all these things bring out different aspects. And I see you're in a in a studio right now. Uh, yeah, what are you working on right, at the moment? Right, right. Um, at the moment, I'm doing a Well, I can't say what I'm doing at the minute, but it's again, it's very different. And it's... <laughs> And it's, um, you know, I, I've just come off a, a, a couple of projects where the orchestra was a big part of it. And with this one, it's I'm surrounded here by guitars and things to scrape guitars with and to make noises. And there's all pedals around my feet and I'm playing with that at the moment. So that'll be something for next year. It wouldn't be distant by any chance, would it? Distant, I actually finished a, a, a way ago. That was recorded in LA last year. So that oh, one's wow. been a while. But that's, that's a great little film. That was my first Amblin thing. So I got to do... The, the you know a big adventure film in Amblin set on an alien planet so that was that was a load of fun I'm kind of looking forward to people seeing that yeah I was I was reading because the the directors I, I've loved some of the work they've done and the cast mm. is fantastic and I, I was reading the plot synopsis and I was like oh yeah that's me that's me yeah. day one <laughs> and it's proper fun it's proper fun it's like you know I got I, without spoiling too much you know the, the, the film opens with this sort of uh, a crash landing onto an alien sort of planet and it's like that's a lot of fun to score. And there's a lot of synths and electronics sort of stuff working together with a big old orchestra. And, but with that spirit of, you know, the films that we grew up with, you know, so it was fun. Is there any uh, genre or any particular type of project that you haven't worked on yet that you, or any director even that you haven't worked with yet? You're like, I'd like, they're on my bucket list or that's on my bucket list. I think with directors, it's like, you know, the the next ones who are going to, you know, be the the Nolans, the Corons, the people who are going to sort of, you know, just, just, really embrace cinema that's the that's the stuff i want to do you know just the stuff that that really embraces what we can do not just with the 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 obvious stuff but with the theater and with the immersion and with all the the things that can make cinema like a unique experience you know something that isn't just for a small screen but it's for for the whole experience as well i kind of i feel we've we've not really touched the sides of that with audio yet you know with with music and what it can actually do 
in a theater and how it can make you feel in, in ways that are you know beyond what an orchestra can do on its own you know is I'm, I'm kind of fascinated with all of that really so so whatever opens up those sort of possibilities i'm i'm very up for i have one last question if that's okay a lot of up-and-coming composers or music musical people might look at yourself uh, as you know oscar winner and score working with some of the biggest directors in the world and working on some of the biggest projects in the world are there any up-and-coming or kind of new arrival composers out there you're like oh they're good they've they've caught my eye i caught my ear with the first or second project that they've there's so out. many really i mean and there's this it was it was interesting sort of seeing it that the i mean he's, he's been around for a long time but but uh, christabel who who won the 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 two emmys the other night for his work on on white lotus you know just doing something totally different with you know such a bold kind of score and i think that's the thing seeing people coming through you know it's not necessarily the the same background that I had, you know, where, where I was working with people like Trevor Jones back in the day. So you got used to to being in that kind of, oh, we're doing a film, we've got the big orchestra in the big room. of People are now making these soundtracks, which are, you know, so inspiring with nothing, you know, with with the sounds of whatever instruments they've got around and really making stuff distinctive. So it's, you know, so much going on now and there's so much content being made. It's almost the challenge is, you know, getting heard by enough people to, to make a difference, you know, and that's, that's the challenge for all of us now, I guess. But yeah, I, I think music's going to, you know, the, the use of music in media is just going to get more and more interesting as we go on. Fantastic. Stephen, thank you so much for your time today. No, thank you. Love to meet you.